In today's episode, we will be exploring the unsolved murder of Klaus Schaukel and attempted murder of Bettina Taxis, who, in 1987, were brutally attacked while aboard the MS Viking Sally, travelling from Stockholm to Finland. The Viking Sally murder is a homicide which took place on the 28th of July 1987 aboard a cruise ship en route to Turku, Finland. West German tourists Klaus Schelkel, aged 20, and Bettina Taxis, aged 22, who were romantically involved with one another, were ferociously attacked while sleeping on deck. Klaus unfortunately died as a result of the attack, while Bettina remained in a critical condition for several weeks after. Klaus and Bettina, who had only met each other a couple of months prior to the incident, fell madly in love with one another. It wasn't long after meeting that they started dating, and the relationship progressed rapidly, to the point that they had even started planning their future together. Klaus, who was an automotive technology student, and Bettina were hard-working individuals, and saved money during the spring and summer of 1987. They had made plans to go on a trip together, just as soon as they had enough money. With their savings beginning to look rather handsome, they began planning their trip, and eventually decided they would tour the Nordic countries. Klaus also invited his friend, Thomas Schmidt, to join them on their trip, to which he accepted. They departed from Stuttgart on the 23rd of July heading north. Their journey would take them through Denmark, Sweden and lastly Norway before returning home to Germany. It was on the 27th of July, around 10pm, that Klaus and Bettina, accompanied by their travel companion Thomas, stepped aboard the Viking Sally, an eight-storey high cruise ship with a 2,000 passenger capacity. The ship was set to arrive in Turku at 8am the following morning. The three had by this point travelled through Denmark towards Sweden, where they stayed in Stockholm for a couple of days. Originally, the plan was to go to North Sweden, however they changed their plans, choosing to take a cruise across the Gulf of Bosnia and travel through Finland. Phone calls home and postcards received by the loved ones suggest all was going well with the trip, but that was all about to change. Upon leaving port, the Viking Sally came alive, with thousands of passengers making their way to their cabins, bars and restaurants aboard the ship. Klaus, Bettina and Tomas familiarised themselves with the ship and made a few quick purchases at one of the shops before finding a place to rest. Klaus and Bettina desired to watch the sunrise in the morning together, and since they couldn't afford a cabin to sleep in, they made the decision to sleep out on the top deck. Thomas, on the other hand, found a place to sleep one floor below, sheltered from the cold winds. Before settling down for the night, Klaus and Bettina took a night stroll around the top deck, where they met a man named Torno. Torno was a businessman who was delivering car parts from Germany to Finland. Klaus and Torno engaged in conversation and instantly connected through their mutual love of cars and automotive technology. Their conversation led them to the car parking deck where Torno was going to show Klaus some of the components he was transporting. However, they discovered that the deck was locked at night. They arranged to meet up again in the morning, with the two men giving each other their contact details. The couple returned to the upper deck, where they planned to sleep shortly after 1am, and snuggled up beneath the stars. The ship fell quiet shortly after 4am, after the last of the bars closed. At 345 just before closing time, three young Danish men wandered onto the top deck to admire the view. The three young men later told authorities 
that the deck was empty when they arrived. Besides from two passengers they spotted near the air vents. Initially, they assumed the passengers were intoxicated, struggling to steady themselves, with one leaning on the wall. One of the men decided to approach the couple and offer to help. This is when he saw that the man and woman were covered in blood. Both Klaus and Bettina suffered blunt force traumas to their skulls and were clinging on to life. One of the men rushed to find help and alert the security while the other two remained. A security officer shortly arrived on the scene. Crew members aided them to the nurse's cabin who after realising the severity of their injuries performed emergency first aid and called for a rescue helicopter to be dispatched. At 5.48am they arrived at hospital, however by this time Klaus had succumbed to his injuries and Bettina, while still alive, was in a critical condition. Bettina endured a long operation and was sedated for several weeks before being transferred to a hospital in Germany. The helicopter, which had been used to transport Klaus and Bettina from the Viking Sally to hospital, was also used to fly police detectives to the ship to begin their investigations. The ship's security officer, who was first to arrive at the scene, secured the crime scene and awaited for the arrival of the police detectives, who eventually landed aboard the ship at 6.30 a.m. The Viking Sally docked at 10 past 8 in the morning in Turk U and were greeted by a dozen police officers. Once docked, passengers were forced to wait before disembarking. The killer had not yet been identified, so the police decided to restrict passengers and funnel them through a single exit. The police patrolled the ship, keeping watch in case anything was thrown overboard. They also set up three cameras to film the passengers leaving the ship. The cameras captured a couple who were acting strange, however, after questioning, it was discovered that the pair were secret lovers and were having an affair. In addition to the cameras, police instructed every passenger to fill out a form detailing their personal information. However, the police underestimated the number of people aboard the ship and the landing area quickly became overcrowded. As a result, exceptions were made Families with young children and the elderly were assumed innocent by the police and were not required to fill out the forms. Those who were unable to confirm their identities were escorted to a separate room where they waited until their identity could be verified. Later that day, the police confirmed that all passengers listed on the ship's manifest were accounted for. The police interviewed 20 people of interest. Among them were the three young men who alerted security and Thomas Schmidt. But all four men were soon released by authorities after they established none had played part in the attack. Another suspect was an English passenger named Patrick Haley. The police noted blood splatters on his shoes and discovered bloodstained clothes within his luggage. Patrick explained that he had suffered a severe nosebleed while drinking the night before. Tess concluded that all blood found on his clothes belonged to him and he was subsequently dropped as a suspect. It was also reported that the police searched for an English speaking slender young man between the age of 20 and 35 wearing a dark green beanie hat rolled up at the edges. Several passengers said they had seen this man acting strangely that evening. The police were never able to locate this man, and while they did find a German passenger with a similar hat and description, his alibi was solid. The authorities naturally questioned the reasoning behind such a brutal attack. It was concluded that the motive was neither financial nor sexual. One detective suggests 
that perhaps jealousy was involved. Maybe the couple said something to another passenger which threw them into a fit of rage. Or maybe the attack was carried out by someone bittered by love. Despite their best efforts, the police were not able to find the killer and as such found themselves under fire from the media. The public were asking why a more thorough search of the ship was not conducted and why some passengers were allowed to leave without questioning. The reality was that there were 1,400 passengers and crew aboard the ship and doing such would have required a tremendous amount of resources and time. Furthermore, it would have required all passengers to have remained on the ship for a further seven days while such an investigation was conducted. It simply would not have been possible to speak to every single person. In total, 250 samples were collected by forensic investigators and were sent for examination at the National Bureau of Investigation in what is described as the biggest forensic operation in Finland's history. However, nothing of significance was found. While the murder weapon was never found, authorities believed the murder weapon would have been one of the axes stored aboard the ship in case of a fire. These would have been readily available throughout the ship. It was one month later in August 1987 that two local fishermen discovered a black bag containing clothes on an uninhabited island, some 200 metres adrift from the sea lane used by ferries to and from Turkey. Initially, they left the bag there, but when they returned a year later and saw it again, they retrieved it and handed it to the police. The bag contained a pair of shoes, lightly coloured shorts, a Finnish made red woolen jumper and a pair of gloves with the initials HK stitched inside. It is believed that these items belonged to a passenger aboard the Viking Sally the night of the murder. The police continue to work this case and have been praised by locals for their dedication to seek the truth. It is strongly believed that the English speaking slender man who the police had searched for back in 1987 is behind the crime. But despite the efforts made by the police, this man has never been identified. While it is possible that this man could have jumped overboard following the murder, there was no evidence to support this. Furthermore, we know that every passenger on the ship's manifest were accounted for when the ship docked. However, with that being said, it is more than possible that this man was a stowaway aboard the ship and would have not been listed on the manifest. Bettina survived her injuries but suffered permanent damage to her eye and hand. She gave a statement to the police about the incident in June 1988 but it was never made public. In more recent times, a retired police inspector said in an interview that Bettina refused to cooperate with the authorities. Allegedly, she didn't clarify the timelines of the event or provide a description of the attacker. However, it is more than likely that Bettina just wants to forget the gruesome events that unfolded that night. With no other witnesses to the crime and limited security footage aboard the ship, this murder mystery seems almost impossible to solve. That was until 2019, when the police revealed that they had a prime suspect for the crime. To avoid compromising the case, the police refused to reveal the suspect's age, sex or nationality, only confirming that the person was alive and had acted alone. They later added that the perpetrator did not know the victims prior to the attack. In September 2020, the police finally announced that they had solved the case and were passing it on to prosecutors. In December 2020, 
a district prosecutor announced that the murder charges had been filed against a Danish 51-year-old man, who was one of the young men who initially discovered Klaus and Bettina. The trial started on May 24, 2021, and then in June 2021, the suspect was acquitted on all charges. It was reported that the accused had, in 2016, allegedly confessed to the murder of Klaus to two Finnish police investigators and provided details of the weapon used, although he subsequently denied this under formal questioning. The alleged confession was made without a defence lawyer or witness being present and was therefore ruled as inadmissible by the court during the trial. Over the decades, there have been a total of three confessions to the murder, but no one has ever been charged. The Viking Sally was eventually renamed MS Estonia in 1993 and tragically sank in the Baltic Sea in 1994. 852 people lost their lives that day, making it one of the worst maritime disasters of the 20th century. While the ship itself is no more, the name Viking Sally lives on and remains the backdrop to one of Finland's most renowned unsolved murders. And that's all for this week. Thank you all for watching. Please remember to click that like button and do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, goodbye.